Apple and Intel working together again after five whole years. Yeah, I know, that sounds crazy, right? These two companies had a pretty messy breakup. Apple ditched Intel, switched to their own M-series chips, and the performance boost was wild. Better battery life, cooler laptops, quieter fans, insane efficiency. Apple basically said, we're doing this ourselves now and never looked back. But here's the shocking part. They're getting close again. Not like before, but close enough that the tech world is paying attention. So what's going on? All right, let's break it down super simple. The big breakup. Years ago, Apple used Intel chips in every Mac. But Apple wasn't happy. Intel chips were running hot, battery life sucked, performance was stuck, and Apple felt held back. So Apple made a bold move. Forget this, we'll make our own chips. And those M1, M2, and M3 chips? Game changers. MacBooks became crazy fast, super efficient, and finally felt like Apple products again. Total control over hardware and software. That's why Apple left Intel behind. So why are they talking again? Even though Apple designs its own chips, they still need factories to actually build them. Right now, almost all of Apple's chips are made by TSMC in Taiwan. Amazing company, but here's the problem. Global tensions, supply chain risks, a single point of failure, and the need for more regional manufacturing. Apple doesn't want all their eggs in one basket anymore. And that's where Intel comes in. Not as a designer, but as a factory using their new 18A manufacturing process. This is Intel's next big thing. Super tiny, super advanced, and built in the USA. Important part, Apple still controls everything. Intel is not designing Apple chips, not touching the architecture, not changing the layout. Apple stays in full control. Intel just prints the chips. That's it. This is like Apple saying, hey, we'll design the brain, you just help us build it. Why would Apple trust Intel again? Honestly, this is the part that surprises people because the past between them was messy. When Apple left Intel, Intel went on a whole marketing tour basically saying, Macs are weak, PCs are better. It was a bit petty. But business is business. And right now, Apple cares more about supply chain safety than old drama. With the world changing, Apple wants more factories, more regions, more backup plans, less risk. And Intel has something Apple might want, a brand new, cutting edge US manufacturing process. What chips will Intel make? Not the fancy ones, not the high-end M series for MacBook Pros or top iPads. Intel will reportedly build entry-level chips, cheaper iPads, MacBook Air chips, possibly a new budget MacBook. The powerful M chips, those stay with TSMC. So think of it like this. TSMC handles the premium stuff, Intel handles the basic stuff. When will this happen? Not tomorrow, not next year. Earliest estimate, 2027. And even that could be pushed back. Chip manufacturing is insanely complicated. So what's the big picture here? This deal isn't Apple going back to Intel. It's Apple doing what Apple does best, making sure they're always safe, always ready, and never dependent on one company. This is all about backup plans, supply chain protection, and the future of chip manufacturing in the US. If Intel's new 18A process works, and that's still a big if, Apple gets more flexibility. If it fails, Apple loses nothing. They still have TSMC. Final takeaway. This is not a love story. This is Apple being smart. Intel becomes a helper, Apple stays in control, and we might see the first Intel-made Apple chips sometime around 2027. It's a strange twist, but honestly, it makes a lot of sense. Apple keeps winning, Intel gets a huge client, and we get more stable tech in the long run. That's the real story.